All right, moving right along. Why don't we start in Ephesians chapter one? Um, if I was to draw a little bit of a thread through some of the things I think that have been coming out tonight so far, there's been a few things already from the testimony and Mitch's thoughts as, as well around um, difficult uh, circumstances and difficult situations. And I actually think some of my thoughts tonight will sort of be in line with that. So praise the Lord. And the thought that I had during the week was that we seem to kind of be living in extreme times. I don't know if anybody else gets that sense. And the thought they have was that extreme times call for extreme scriptures. So that's my slightly random title of the talk. Extreme times call for extreme scriptures. And what I mean is that there are so many scriptures that are absolute. They, re- they apply to everything. There's no exceptions. There's no if, but, or maybe. And I think we, in our own lives and choices and everything, we can be quite variable, right, um, in the extent to which maybe we live out the word of God, um, yeah, do the things we do or don't want to do and don't do the things we want to do, as we read in Romans chapter 7 there. But the word is full of things that are absolutes and they're extreme in the, in the sense that they relate to absolutely every situation without exception. So we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 1. And this is talking about Jesus Christ. And uh, it's talking about the preeminence of Jesus Christ. And uh, it says uh, in verse 20, it's talking about Christ being seated at the right hand of God. And we'll pick it up in verse 20, 21. It says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. There's no exceptions. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So what things is the name of Jesus Christ more powerful than what can the name of Jesus Christ overcome all things without exception it's absolute it's extreme if you like you know we sing this song Jesus name above all names and I think there's another one there is no other name and they sound nice and lovely in their great songs and it is nice and lovely but the reality is that it's infinitely powerful the fact that Jesus name is above all things And here it called out some of the most important things, I think, for us to understand and appreciate that the name of Jesus Christ is above. So far above all principality, power, might, dominion. In 2 Corinthians 10, it says the weapons of our warfare are spiritual. You might remember that those verses. It says they pull down strongholds. They cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against God, bringing every thought into captivity. So arguments, thoughts, concepts, ideas, atheism, humanism, uh, popular ideas, natural philosophies, all of these things that argue against God, principalities, dominion, anything and everything that tries to rule, that tries to be powerful. The name of Jesus has all authority and is far above every other name and every other type of power. And all the people said, amen. I'm sure you're amening with me. Um, And this is why this is why Peter declared, didn't he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He was very specific about the name that he was naming. And this is why we pray in the name of Jesus. It is above all things, Uh, which brings us to our next absolute scripture. Turn with me to Mark chapter nine. By the way, Mitch, I would quite happily have all of the black jelly beans. I reckon one or two other people would as well. Uh, Mark chapter 9 is another absolute scripture. And uh, we know this, this scripture of healing well, I think. It's this child, this boy that since a young age has had this mute spirit, it says, and he has seizures and he's convulsed and thrown into the fire and, and the disciples uh, couldn't cast out this illness or this spirit or whatever it was. And uh, verse 21, he asked, uh, Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And he said, and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, 
have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And all the people said, and immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So what things are possible to him or her who believes? All things. This man had cried out, Jesus, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us in these difficult situations that we go through in our life. And we, compared to this man, right, if you think about it, we are now Jesus' brothers and sisters, right? We're sons and daughters of God through the Holy Spirit. And Jesus does have compassion on us. He took those stripes so that he can heal us. He's already paid the full price for our healing, as we heard as well. So Jesus' response essentially was, I can do all things. If you can believe, all things are possible. Um, And even in that, we have this great encouragement in the scripture that even in that, we know that Jesus responds to our imperfect faith and our elements of unbelief that we inevitably experience. So whatever situation we're facing, Uh, whatever circumstances we're going through in our life, we can know that the name of Jesus is above all things and all things are possible to him or her who believes and calls on his name. Uh, These are awesome, extreme, absolute scriptures that I love them. And I hope you do too. They're good to remind ourselves of. Uh, Let's turn to Romans 8. Romans 8 has about 17 absolute scriptures. So we'll just, you know, we'll pick one of those. Uh, It's like... It's an absolute chapter, isn't it? It's an extreme chapter. Now, um, as a bit of a prelude for this one, so we love the Lord and we walk in the spirit. And yet we have, you might have noticed, we have good things and bad things happen in our natural lives. Like we heard in, in Paul's testimony before. The rain, as we read, falls on the just and the unjust. Uh, and rain is invariably good, right? We need it for life and to grow things. Good things happen to all. And yet rain, as many of us may have experienced recently, can also be very destructive. And bad things can happen to us all. It's called trials and tribulations, right? It's called life. And the presence, it's important that we know that the presence of issues in your life are not a sign of God's favour or disfavour upon you. It's life life happens. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the scriptures say things like, I will rather boast in my infirmities, for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. It goes on. And scriptures like James chapter one, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So we all have these sort of spectrum of good and bad things that happen, but in all of this spectrum of seemingly good and seemingly bad things that happen, there is an absolute extreme truth that underlines it all and you probably know what we're about to read which is verse 28 of Romans chapter 8 and it says and we know that all things I should do a pastor Andrew here and say some things doesn't say that that's his little trick (laughs) he's smiling along shaking his head I like teasing pastor Andrew he's a good sport we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are the called according to his purpose. This is awesome stuff, saints. This is unequivocal, 100%, all things, all situations, without exception. Now, (laughs) another random thought. I remember arguing this point with my grandpa when I was maybe 10 years old. So I was argumentative even back then, Pastor Andrew. And uh, he's 91 today, by the way, Mervyn, for anybody that remembers that name. Um, The two of us, we went for a bike ride. They were visiting in camp. We went for a bike ride to go and buy a newspaper because this is the early 90s, right? So you do stuff like go for a bike ride to go and buy a newspaper. I literally can't remember apart from then the the last time I did that, aside from then. Um, And he mentioned this scripture. I can't remember the context, but he mentioned this scripture. Maybe it was the first time I heard it. I don't know. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. And I said, what? What if, what if I got a puncture right now? How could that be good? Big brain, right? I go straight to the really challenging existential issues. What if I got a puncture? <laughs> and he said, well, you, you would wait here and I would go and get a repair kit and it would all be good. And I said, well, what if we both got flat tyres? What then? 
And he said, all things work together for good. That's what the scriptures say. So you would stay here with the bikes and I would go and ask someone for help. And then when they asked, why are we so relaxed and joyful when both of us got a flat tire, we could tell them about the joy of the Lord. And I, st- I won't say I fully understood, but I, start- I would say I started to understand that this is about, this scripture is about the big picture, isn't it? It's about seeing things from God's perspective. And, and maybe even if we can't see things from God's perspective, then simply trusting that ultimately whatever happens to us, however many flat tires you get, whatever happens to us in the natural, our lives are hidden in God's hands. As we read, if we love the Lord and follow his calling, then whatever set of situations we go through, at the end of it, we know we're going to end up, right? They all going to, they all leave, whatever situations we go through, if we love the Lord and follow his calling, they end up in the same place. And that place is called good. It is with the Lord. It is dwelling with him for all eternity. And along the way, of course, he dwells with us. He provides for us. He ministers his peace, which we've heard about as well. We know that trials and tribulations build patience and character and we rest in him and he gives us this rest and this refreshing and we know that good always comes out of a situation these are extreme scriptures to hold on brothers and sisters hold on to and to declare in our own lives and encouraging each other with these scriptures as well in these times that we're going through the name of jesus christ is above all things all things are possible to him or her who believes all things work together for good if we love the Lord and we're called by him. And all the people said, amen.